chat about too often on the channel, but is a dear, dear hobby of mine, something I absolutely love, as maybe a few of you may know, and that is, as you can tell by the title, the NBA. Now, for those who maybe don't watch the NBA or are not familiar with it, it is the National Basketball Association in America, which every April, May time of the year, they have a big competition called the Playoffs, which is when the 16 best teams all battle to be the best team in the world. Um, and it's so much fun, it's really competitive, really exciting. And one thing I always love to do is predict, predict, predict who I think is going to win. And that is exactly what we're going to be doing in tonight's video. And I don't do this too often, so this is going to be really fun for me. And maybe if this isn't, this isn't your kind of thing, I hope you can still enjoy the relaxing sounds and whispering. And maybe you're new to the channel and are looking for some ASMR NBA content, in which case you're in the right place. If you do enjoy, be sure to leave the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and without further ado, let's all kick back, relax, and have a little bit of a ramble and chat, a little bit of a more chilled video where we predict the NBA playoffs 2000. Now, at the time of recording this video, it is currently 
Monday the 16th, or no, Tuesday the 16th, late night on Monday. So the play-in tournament hasn't actually commenced yet. So the eighth seed is either going to be the winner of the, let me get this straight. So the seventh seed is going to be the winner of the Sixers Heat because the Sixers finished seventh and the Heat finished um, eighth. The Bulls were the ninth seed. I'm a Bulls fan for those one, uh, wondering. And the Hawks were the tenth seed. So the eighth seed is going to be the loser or the winner of the Bulls Hawks versus the loser of the 76ers heat. Now let me just get this straight for the play-in tournament. I think personally the Sixers heat matchup. I think the Sixers are going to win. I think it's going to be a very close game. Going to go down to the wire. But I think the Sixers are going to take the seventh seed. I think the Bulls will beat the Hawks. I know some of you will say it's biased because I'm a Bulls fan. But I think that game is it's the type of, type of game that will probably go into overtime. Especially knowing the Bulls. Trey Young just coming back as well. But I think the Bulls will beat the Hawks. But then... Just like last year, they will not stand a chance really against the Heat in the 8th seed play-in game. So I think the 8th seed will be the Heat. So my first round matchup is going to be the Celtics versus the Heat. And I think, I think the Celtics are going to take this one. I think the Heat will put up a good, you know, it's playing Jimmy Butler. You don't know what's going to happen with that, especially after last year against uh, the Milwaukee Bucks. <coughs> but I just think the Celtics, despite how good they are, they probably will give up a couple games. Uh, but with their incredible, incredible lineup, Drew Holiday, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Porzingis, it, they're going to be very unstoppable this year, I think. It could potentially be their year. I'm going to take the Celtics to beat the Heat in six. That's my prediction for the first round. Next up, we have the fourth seed Cleveland Cavaliers, who finished 48 and 34, versus the Orlando Magic, who finished 47 and 35. The Magic have really surprised everyone this year. Um, I'm really happy for them. They definitely deserve to be. Uh, a play in or a playoff team. Um, they've had they've been very well coached this year. Um, some of their young guys have performed very very well. Of course, with the likes of um, Paolo Banquero uh, playing incredible, uh, Jalen Suggs as well. They've just been an unstoppable team. Very fun and exciting to watch. However, the Cavs are the Cavs. And I really, really like Donovan Mitchell. They've been really good. Karis LeVert has been amazing off the bench for them as well. Um, they've got good bigs. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how they match up against the Magic um, with with their with Evan Mobley and Jarrett Allen as well. So I think the Cavs are going to take this one. A bit more playoff experience from them as well, especially against the young seed. Uh, are the young team magic so I think due to inexperience the Cavs are going to take this one and I think it's going to be in five the magic might take a game they might take a game right this next one is an interesting one we have the number two seeded Knicks who finished 15-32 it's honestly incredible I am super for Knicks fans. I have a lot of family members and friends who are Knicks fans, um, so I'm sure that they're all very happy with how they finished this year. 15-32, unfortunately, no Julius Randle in the playoffs, but with the likes of Jalen Brunson, who has had, do you know what, I'm happy to say a top 5 NBA season, top 5 NBA potentially could have been MVP if he had been how he had been all year round. Um, a 
has definitely helped leave the Knicks to that 50 uh, win year, which is really, really incredible. Um, and, you know, they've had some players that have definitely blossomed this year. The trade with OG Ananobi has been really good for them. Even Genso, one of the best three-point shooters in the NBA at the moment. Uh, Arnstein, if Mitchell Robinson is fully healthy, I think they can definitely play well. But here's the issue. I think they're going to match up against the winner of the 76ers versus Heat, obviously, which is, in my opinion, going to be the 76ers. Which I think is very unfortunate for Knicks fans. It is going to be one hell of a game, or one hell of a series. Um, Joel Embiid's going to be unstoppable. He is going to be unstoppable. Provided he stays healthy. Maxi. We'll see how he fares against Brunson. Uh, obviously Tobias Harris. They've been a good team when healthy. They definitely don't serve don't deserve to be a play in team. They should be like fourth, fifth seed potentially. So I think it's gonna go down to the wire and be a six or potentially seven game series. Oh, I don't know for this one. It could be either. I'm gonna go the Knicks. I'm gonna go the Knicks in seven. It's gonna be ridiculous. Uh, let's just move on. I cannot talk about that matchup anymore. The next matchup we have here is the Milwaukee Bucks, who finished 49 and 33 against the sixth seed Indiana Pacers who finished 47-35. and 35. I'd like to note that's the same record as the Magic. Uh, I think the Magic just had the tie break. <clears throat> so that just shows you just how close um, it could have been for the Milwaukee Bucks playing the Magic and the Cavs playing the Pacers in the first round. But I believe Yanis got injured like a week before the end of the season. Assuming he comes back, which I'm sure he will, and assuming he'll be just as good, I think I've got the Bucks taking this one. Obviously, the Pacers are a very high-paced team, if you ignore the pun. I think they broke the franchise record for points in a game in their final game of the season. Tyrese Halliburton has been definitely all-star caliber. This, he's an all-star starter this year, I believe, um, has had a really good year. He's had some off games, but, you know, incredible passer, good three-point shooter, can definitely lead the team along with Miles Turner and so many others. But with the Bucks now having Dame Dollar, it's gonna be tough, but I think I gotta give it to the Bucks. Um, you know, Brooke Lopez as well, um, with Bobby Portis being the guy he is as well, off the bench, you know, they've got a good team, they've got a good team, Chris Middleton, if, once again, if he's healthy, they should be all good against the Pacers, and I think I'm gonna take the Bucks in five, the Pacers might take a game at home, that's my guess. So that is the first round in the East. I'm not going to move on to the second round just yet. I'm going to go on to the West, which is probably, I would just argue, argue just as exciting as the East this year. Potentially even more. It's the first year in a while where I've been so unsure on so many of the games. A lot of the years in the past, I've been able to decide almost instantly who's going to win, but this year, I have no clue. And we start with this first matchup with the one-seeded Oklahoma City Thunder, who finished with a record of, is it going to show me, 57-25. and 25. Whilst I'm here, though, the Nuggets, also 57-25. and 25. And the Timberwolves, also 57 and 25. It has been an outstanding, outstanding uh, year in the Western Conference. <coughs> but in the 
this first matchup, the eighth seed. I think the way the play-in tournament's gonna work for the West, you got the Pelicans versus the Lakers and the Kings versus the Warriors. So the Pelicans were the seventh seed, the Lakers were eighth, Kings ninth, and Golden State tenth, I wanna say. I may be wrong. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry. But I think for the Pelicans-Lakers game to take the seventh seed, I think the Lakers will win that one. They they played the last game of the season as well. And I think with LeBron, you know, they're, they're going to win that one. Kings-Warriors is such an incredible matchup. Every time the Kings play the Warriors, I love watching it. It's always so good. Always so good. Um... But I think for the 8th seed, um, the loser of the Lakers-Pelicans, the Pelicans playing the winner of the Kings-Warriors, which I think is going to be the Warriors. I think the Warriors are going to beat the Pelicans. So I'm going to take the 8th seed. Oh no, I'm not going to take the 8th seed. I was, uh, that was me telling you that the 8th seed is going to be the Warriors. I think Oklahoma are going to be Golden State, is what I'm trying to say. It is interesting, though, because obviously the Warriors have more playoff experience. Curry, Draymond, Wiggins, uh, Clay Thompson, Kuminga has, a very, has had a very good year as well. Um, Clay started off very quiet, but as the, the year went on, he has definitely blossomed into the Clay Thompson we used to know, maybe. Uh, OKC, despite, I think the only thing they struggle is experience. That's the only thing they struggle with here. They're a young team. They have a potential MVP candidate with Shea. Uh, Jalen Williams, who's been amazing for them. Really, really, really talented player. Probably one of my favorite players in the NBA. Uh, the other Jalen Williams, of course. Lou Dort. And not to mention Chet Holmgren, who probably would have won uh, Rookie of the Year if it weren't for Wemby, of course. Um, maybe last year, if he wasn't injured, would have had a good chance as well. I think OKC will take this one due to them having the better season but once again with the eighth play-in winner being the Warriors I think it's gonna be a tough series and I think I'm gonna take OKC in six that's what I'm gonna go with then we have the matchup I am probably most excited for the Clippers and the Mavericks the Clippers had such a good season, 51-31. It has been really fun watching Paul George, Kawhi Leonard healthy, Paul George healthy, James Harden healthy, all of them together healthy. It's been so good to see Russell Westbrook when he's been healthy. It's been nice to see him play well. Um, they've been coached really well, and um, it's they've had a really good year. The Mavericks having signed Kyrie, 50, 50, the records are basically the same again, and obviously having another MVP candidate in uh, Luka Doncic, who is probably my favorite NBA player at the moment. It's gonna be a matchup to watch. Uh, I believe they signed Daniel Gafford as well, one of my favorite centers to watch. Um, They've had a good year. They've had a good year. And I think this matchup is going to be one of the closest matchups that we will see. But as much as I want to see Luka go far in the playoffs, the thing is, if, is if I take the Mavericks, I think the Mavericks will destroy the Thunder in like five games, potentially a sweep. But I think the Clippers will win. And I think it'll be, I think it'll be a seven game series we're going to see there. It's unfortunate. 
Mavs fans, I'm really sorry. I want to pick you, but it's kind of it's literally 50-50 for me. I just think with Paul George, Kawhi, and um, James Harden, it's the trio is just so good, and their bench depth is good. It's it's gonna be good. The second to last matchup in the first round is the Denver Nuggets versus the seventh playing winner, who I think is going to be the Lakers. <coughs> the revenge game, uh, or the revenge series of the Nuggets-Lakers. Long story short, I think it's going to be the Nuggets again. Um, Jokic has had another Jokic season. Um, Jamal Murray, he's healthy again, he's back. Um, uh, Michael Porter Jr. as well. He has been very, very good for them. Aaron Gordon has been outstanding this year for them as well. Um, they've had a good year. The Lakers, on the other hand, have had an interesting year. You know, they've had spells where they've not been good. And then they've had spells where they've just gone on extreme winning streaks. So... I actually think in the last game of the season as well, Anthony Davis got injured uh, within like the last five minutes. So hopefully he's fully recovered come playing um, and can help them beat the Pelicans. But I think when it comes to the first round, the Nuggets are going to win and I think it's going to be in six. The Lakers will take the two first home games is my thought. I think it's I think it's going to go Nuggets, Nuggets. Lakers, Lakers, Nuggets, Nuggets. Um, but it could easily be a seven-game series. And finally, we have the Denver Wolves, Suns. <sighs> Another matchup that I just... It's so tough to decide. I really don't think the Suns should be the sixth seed. It's just the West is that stacked. Um... Timberwolves, Ant-Man has been, he's, he's so fun to watch, he's probably one of my favourite players to watch, very jealous of that draft pick, Carl Anthony Towns, it's a shame he got injured like a few weeks, or months prior to the end of the season, um, Rudy Gobert has had a defensive player of the year season, Mike Conley has been great for them as well, but the Suns, um, you know, I think Grayson Allen just signed a new extension, um, and, I mean, I don't know why I'm starting with Grayson Allen, I don't even like Grayson Allen, if I'm being honest, um, <laughs> with, obviously, Kevin Durant, Bradley Beal, um, Devin Booker, who has been amazing this year as well, um, Nurkic, um, they've just been dominant, they have been dominant in some of their games, but I like to think that they'll beat the Timberwolves, but it's going to be a series to watch, so I'm going to take the Suns, and I'm going to take them in six, or am I going to take them in, it doesn't, I mean, if we look at the point system, I probably should have talked about this at the start of the video, but in the first round, you get 10 points for picking the series winner with an additional 5-point bonus for picking the number of games that it will last. So getting the number of games right is very, very important. And I think it's going to be in 6, so I'm going to stick with my gut. Okay, now we move on to the second round. This should be a little bit faster now that I've kind of talked about the teams individually a bit. So we have the Celtics versus the Cavs. I mean, when I said earlier that I think this is the Celtics year, it's kind of a little bit of um, a spoiler because I think the Celtics are going to go to the finals. I think the Celtics will beat the Cavs. Um, I think it'll be either a five-game or six-game series. I think... Who's going to guard Jason Tatum out of, out of the Cavs players, really? I, it's, I, I don't, honestly don't know. It's, it's going to be a, 
a good fun watch, but I honestly think it'll be the Celtics in five. I think this will be their easiest matchup. The next matchup is the Knicks Bucks, and I'm sorry, Knicks fans, but I think this is where it's going to be the end of the road for you. Having Randall been healthy, and maybe if you had been in a different situation in the playoffs, there is a chance if you had got the third seed, you would have played the Pacers. And then if the Bucks had got the second seed, I mean, you still would have probably had the Bucks. But there's even a chance, you know, that that could be the Heat. You could end up going through the Heat and then the Pacers, or the Heat and the Bucks. But I think it's there's even a chance you could lose to the Sixers. But I think this is where it is going to be the end of the road with the Bucks. And I think it's probably going to be a five or a six game series. Going to give it a six game series. I don't think I have a four game series yet. It's very rare you get them nowadays anyways. Especially with the current caliber of the NBA. So I think Bucks and six. And that moves us on to the second round of the West. Where we have OKC versus the Clippers. And now again, unfortunately for Thunder fans, I think this is where it's going to be the end of the road for you. Um, the Clippers with their more experience, um, I think it's it's where it's probably going to be at for them. Despite Shea being as good as he is, you've almost got three of, of the top 20 players in the NBA on the other team. Um, defensive players that are just incredible. I know OKC are a good defensive team as well, but I think it's going to be the Clippers that takes this one, and I believe it's going to be not too difficult for them. I'm going to take it in five. Moving on to the final game here, we have the Nuggets, Suns. And as much as I want to take the Suns in this matchup, I think this, again, it's going to be a really good matchup here. I think I said that for almost every matchup, though, so I just think this year is going to be one of the best playoffs that I've watched. Um, I think here I've got to take the Nuggets. They're just, when it comes to the playoffs, there's something about them where they I just feel like they could be any team. It, 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 they could, and I'm saying could, be any team, because obviously they might not. But I feel like they, it's, it's not questionable whether they could lose it. They could always win it. So I think that despite, and, and the reason I'm saying this is despite the Suns having KD, Booker, and Bradley Beal, I still think Jokic and company will get the win here. And I think it's going to be a good series. I'm going to put six games on the line there for that one. Hopefully I'm right. Because the points do double um, as it goes into the second round for this particular scoring system. And that brings us on to the conference finals. Oh boy, we're nearly there. We have in the East the Celtics Bucks matchup that we all want to see. <sighs> Who do I take for this one? I think I'm going to have to take it for the Celtics. Um, I think that they are the better team. I think that they are better coached. And I think that I just think it's their year. I think it's their year, so I'm going to take the Celtics. Despite Giannis, I think Giannis's injury is going to play a part. It's going to play a part. And I think I'm going to give it to the Celtics in six. We haven't seen the best of Dame this year. We haven't seen him play as well as he could be for the Bucks. He's still finding his way. 
don't get me wrong, he's had good games, but majority of them have been underperforming games for Dame's caliber that I think it's going to be the Celtics. And then moving over to the West, we have the Clippers versus the Nuggets. Oh my gosh, this is so tricky. I think... Do you know what? I'm just going to say this now. I think it's going to be the Celtics Nuggets in the finals. And I'm going to give it in six. A lot of mine have been in six though, I've just noticed. Let's give this one a seven game series. Now we move on to the final year, the Celtics Nuggets. I can tell you now, I don't think it's going to be a seven game series. It's hardly ever a seven game series in the final. So I think it's going to be a six game series. And I think this is going to be a very, very good finals. But Celtics fans, because I know there are a lot of you that want to see you win this year. I think this is your year, and I think the champions of 2024 are going to be the Boston Celtics. I think they'll defeat the Nuggets in six. And that's what I'm going to go for as my NBA playoff bracket for 2024. Let me know what you think of my takes. I think I'm pretty happy with it. There's a few that I'm still undecided about, honestly, at the moment. Like the Knicks-Sixers game. Um, the Clippers-Mavericks series. Timberwolves-Suns. Bucks-Knicks. Even the Bucks-Celtics. It's, it's just, put it this way, it's going to be an amazing, amazing, amazing playoffs but that is where i'm going to wrap up tonight's video i really hope that you all have enjoyed and found it nice and relaxing as well at the same time once again if you would like to submit your very own bracket to my nba group there is a link in the description to where you can do so create your own bracket choose how many games and which team gonna win each series and who you think is gonna be the champion and submit it to our group and try and win but best of luck to you all this is gonna be such an amazing next month for the nba and i cannot wait to get watching them so sleep well everybody thank you so much for watching and good night